Welcome to episode 19 of Counseling Corner, where I try to give practical application to biblical truth. As always, I am your host, Isaac Johnson, and uh, hope you guys had a great 4th of July. Uh, One of the reasons why I'm putting this episode out a day late is because of the fact that 4th of July, you know, came on a Tuesday uh, this year. And so maybe you were one of those people that got um, a four-day weekend, and maybe you're one of those really blessed people who got paid to have a four-day weekend. So if that was you, good on you. Uh, My wife and I and my daughters got an opportunity to go out to a friend's place. They live in in, in what's called Big Lake, uh, Alaska. Um, and it's kind of that near Wasilla. So about an hour's drive from where we live and, and it's aptly named. They live on a big lake. It's a, a, you know, and they have all the toys, jet skis and boats and things like that. And so, um, it was just fun to get out there and eat a bunch of food and just, uh, kind of socialize and relax. And one of the interesting things that we you know experienced was we took a little boat ride. And as we got to the middle of the lake, I noticed there was a coffee shop in the middle of the lake. And at first I thought it was a joke, but no, it has hours of operation. It's running. It serves coffee. So I thought only in Alaska could you go out to the middle of the lake and find a working, running coffee shop. So it was kind of interesting. But anyway, let's dive in for today's topic. You know, so, you know, in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 8, you know, Paul shares with us that in order to keep him from becoming conceited, he was given a thorn in his flesh. You know, Paul prayed, you know, three times for God to take it away, but God simply told him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, so we don't know what Paul's thorn was. You know, some theologians, they speculate that it was a a physical limitation. Uh, Others believe it may have been some kind of emotional or relational issue. My guess is that Paul was a lifelong Seattle Mariners fan and had finally just had enough, you know. But whatever his thorn was, one thing was certain. God was not going to take it away from him. You know, and my question is kind of like, why? You know, why would a loving God who who chose Paul to be one of the greatest apostles and and authors in history? Remember, he he wrote about two thirds of the New Testament. You know, so why would God allow him to be afflicted with such a chronic, debilitating and, and really clearly distressing kind of issue? You know. And and maybe why does God, he seems to allow many of us to have thorns in our lives as well, you know? Why hasn't God healed me yet? Why won't God release me from this job that I hate, you know? Or my spouse, you know, they mistreat me and, and seem to constantly disrespect me, yet I don't feel permission to leave my marriage. You know, so we read... We read scriptures like James 1 chapter or you know chapter 1 verse 2 and and Romans 5 verses 3 through 5 that tell us that God uses suffering to mature us and and make us resilient and and that is certainly true. You know, we also know that that God gives us struggles to soften us so, so that we are more empathetic and able to help others who are hurting. You know, 2 Corinthians 1 3 through 5 and and we can accept that hardships make us more dependent on God, Psalm 34, 18. But a benefit of pain that I think we often overlook is that God often uses painful and difficult situations to protect us. You know, I'll give you a great example. I had a, a young lady that I was working with you know, a while back, and um, she was just in a very trying situation. She had a, a, a marriage where her husband had just basically turned his back on God. He was struggling with addiction and, and not really wanting to get any help. He was uh, very controlling, very emotionally and verbally abusive to her um, and and just, you know, really um, blaming her all the time for things. It was, it was a tough situation. And, and when we were talking and processing this, I, you know, I asked her, you know, why why do you stay in this relationship? I mean, you, you probably could feel a lot of moral or, or legal justification to walk away. And, and she said, you know, as she, she thought about that, you know, there was a part of her that, of course, wanted to just get away. But as she prayed and, and really sought God's um, wisdom in all this, she just felt God telling her to stay. And the reason was because she knows her personality. She knows she's very impulsive and, and, uh, and, can, and, and in this place, you know, in this time in her life, she had a lot of areas of immaturity. And she knew, she knew that if, if she just got divorced 
and experience the relief of that relationship being over, you know, she would probably start dating very soon. And because she was lonely and vulnerable, probably end up with somebody who was just as bad or worse than the guy she's currently married to. So it's weird to think about it, but she, she could recognize that God keeping her in this marriage, though it was uncomfortable, it was protecting her from doing some things that would have been even created even worse problems for her. So, because she knew that, I mean, she was one of those people that if she's married, she's not going to go out and seek anybody out. She was going to keep her commitment. So the legal commitment that she had made to the marriage was protecting her from something worse. You know, so if we go back to the verse that we just referenced, you know, second Corinthians 12, seven, you know, Paul, he reveals to us that God is keeping this thorn in his life to quote, keep me from being conceited. Yeah. And I, I can't help but chuckle when I read this because it, it kind of feels like Paul's being a little sarcastic here, you know, because we know that before he was blinded and converted on the road to Damascus, Paul was a Pharisee and probably a very highly touted one at that. And he was able to convince the Jewish high priest at the time to give him permission to seek out and arrest and persecute anyone who was a follower of Jesus. So my guess is that Paul was already very conceited, very arrogant you know, and of course, this character flaw did not go unnoticed by God. So if God was, did not keep Paul's tendency towards pride in check, Paul would not be very useful for God's kingdom as an apostle. And Paul may have even been more likely to uh, have his impulsive and self-focused nature make decisions for him and others that, that could have got him killed or, or pre- created some problems there uh, before God's appointed time. So if you think about it, the thorn in Paul's flesh was really a loving, protective boundary by God. And, you know, and God did a similar thing in the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. You know, here we have an arrogant, immature teenager who who foolishly at age 17, you know, shares a dream from God with his brothers that that his brothers are going to bow down to him someday. You know, now his brothers being pretty immature themselves, they react indignantly and sell him into slavery. Uh, but the Bible says at this point that, that God is with Joseph. Yeah, he's with Joseph. Yet Joseph is falsely accused of rape by Potiphar's wife and thrown into prison. So, so now you have the situation where God's saying, I'm with you, Joseph, but I'm going to put you in jail. You know? So, uh, you know, I'm sure God used jail to mature and humble Joseph because God never wastes a trial. Uh, but what we, what we don't think about was that prison was likely the safest place for Joseph in Egypt at this time. You know, Joseph was a shepherd by trade, and Egyptians viewed shepherds as detestable, as the drudge of society. Now, we're not really sure exactly why that is, but there's a lot of speculation as to maybe uh, some of their cultural beliefs and things. And so, regardless of the reasons, we just know that Joseph would have struggled to survive on his own in Egypt, you know. So, I'm I'm sure being in jail wasn't much fun, but he was provided with free shelter, food, and protection until God was ready to use him to save his people. So God, again, was using this difficult thing to actually protect Joseph. You know, so maybe you find yourself stuck today, you know, in a, in a very painful and confusing situation like Joseph or Paul. Perhaps you're single and desperately want to be married. You know, so instead of viewing this stage as punishment from God or, or proof that there is something wrong with you physically or emotionally, I, you know, I'd encourage you to try to see your singleness as potential protection where God knows your immature tendencies, you know, and your insecurities. And he's keeping you emotionally safe until you are ready and the person he has in mind for you is ready. You know, as Dr. Dobson says, it's really better to be single and lonely than married and miserable. Or perhaps you're somebody who's dealing with a chronic illness or you're facing a permanent disability due to an accident. You know, before you start blaming God or or give in to self-pity and despair like we want to do, again, look for the protective possibility. You know, I had a friend uh, who was sideswiped by another car at an intersection. So this happened I don't know, 15 years ago. Um, his passenger that was riding with him, they, they walked away unscathed. But my friend, he suffered permanent physical and brain damage from this accident. And I asked him one day why he had a, such a good attitude, because he just never complained. 
even though he now had so many physical and, and cognitive limitations. And he told me that before the car accident, he was on a path just leading directly to hell. I mean, he knew about God, but he wanted nothing to do with God. You know, he thought he was living the dream, you know, successful and all these kinds of things. But in reality, he was just very lonely and empty on the inside. So when he woke up in the hospital after almost losing his life, his whole perspective just shifted in an instant. He gave his life to Jesus and he says he's experienced more joy and peace in his damaged body than he ever felt when his mind and body were whole. And if you talk to him today, I mean, he'd tell you without hesitation that God has used that traumatic experience to protect him from experiencing eternity without God. You know? Or lastly, you know, maybe you're one of those people like a lot of us that just sort of feel trapped in a church that feels lifeless and stagnant. You know? And this might be an indicator that, that God wants you to step out and find a new place to worship. You know? Or God may want to protect you by keeping you in a church that is a little stale, but is spiritually safe and, and grounded because he knows where your rebellious nature would take you if you did leave. And I can speak to this example firsthand. You know, in my early 20s, man, I was I was attending a small local church, and, you know, and they were not growth or outreach oriented, at least not like my youthful, spiritual, immature exuberance believe that they should be. So I gave the leadership a piece of my mind and exited stage left in a self-righteous huff. And then I bounced around for the next several years from one unhealthy ministry to the next, taking hit after hit from Satan because I was uncovered spiritually. Now, eventually God humbled me and actually brought me back to this church that I had originally left, the one that I'd kind of given the, the spiritual finger to. And, you know, and the pastors, they were, while they were, they weren't very flashy or, or maybe super gifted, what they were was steady, mature, and sincere. And, and God kept me in that uncomfortable, yet challenging, and I would say very safe environment for many years while he taught me how to submit to authority, you know, so it was really good and and healing. So, you know, sometimes God uses temporary painful experiences to protect us from physical harm, you know, like causing us to miss our flight, to prevent us from dying in a plane crash, or or maybe keeping us from moving to a new geographical location to save us from some impending natural disaster that only he could know about. And those stories, we hear about those, and those are pretty cool. But I think most of the time, he just keeps us tied to pain to protect us from ourselves. You know, we're probably our greatest enemy. You know, I, I love what one speaker said, you know, there's the, the enemy, Satan, but then there's also the inner me, which is probably sometimes more dangerous. That's ourselves. Because God, you know, he knows our unhealthy tendencies better than we do. And he also knows what boundaries will protect us from acting on them. So, you know, just like an earthly parent will keep a child in an uncomfortable circumstance because they know their son or daughter is not yet ready for a particular freedom, our Heavenly Father will often keep us tied to pain to prevent catastrophe. You know, so the next time that maybe you find yourself wanting to pursue the quick and easy path of relief, you know, during a hardship, man, just ask yourself, is the discomfort I am feeling proof I need to leave the nest? Or is it possible that this is the temporary price I need to pay in order to remain in God's protection? You know, because we need to be careful that we don't leave the chafing security of our shepherd only to be devoured by an unseen wolf. So, anyway, thank you so much for listening today. And, um... You know, as always, if you have any feedback for me, any questions or ideas for future topics, um, please email me at Isaac at LifespringAK.com. That's I-S-A-A-C at LifespringAK.com. And if this uh, content has been helpful for you, please leave a review or share it with somebody because I just want to help as many people as I possibly can. So, um Until next time, 
um, I just pray that you have a blessed and uh, just impactful week.